What I'd like to talk about today is vitamin D. Now, vitamin D has been well known in terms of its relationship to bone calcification and bone strength and prevention of osteoporosis and osteopenia. Um, and there's even been some, uh, some information coming out about vitamin D's effects as an antidepressant. But what isn't commonly known by the public is the immense amount of peer-reviewed scientific literature showing vitamin D to be an anti-inflammatory compound. As a matter of fact, vitamin D is not even really a vitamin. It is a hormonal uh, molecule and acts as a hormone in our body. And one of the ways in which it acts is as an anti-inflammatory hormone. Now, in its anti-inflammatory activity, it also helps to prevent cancer. And you will see a lot of information coming out in the public arena now, uh, and uh, certainly over the next year or so, about the cancer prevention qualities of vitamin D. One of the ways in which it does that is through its prevention of, an, of, of uh, inflammation, but also it um, prevents some of the precancerous changes of the cells in our body. So as cells start to become cancerous, they start to go through some preliminary changes, and vitamin D makes that stop. It halts those preliminary precancerous changes in the cells. Part of that is due to its anti-inflammatory cap capability, but part of it is due to its direct uh, effects on uh, cellular differentiation. So, vitamin D, or the hormone D. The other thing I'd like to say before we stop here is that the best form of vitamin D is in the D3 form. Now you can get it over the counter as D2 or D3. D3 is the most effective form. The levels required by most people now, looking at the peer-reviewed literature, is about anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000 IUs, that's international units, daily. So, start taking your vitamin D. If you can't get it by being in the sun properly, then take it orally and take vitamin D3. Prevent cancer. Treat inflammation smartly. Thank you.